Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our UH1H Huey, which is awesome. I love flying this thing when I get a chance. Um, and we're looking at navigation, uh, three types of navigation in particular. One we're looking at is ADF, navigation, automatic direction finding. Uh, the second we're looking at is ILS. And the third we're looking at is VHF on an FM band. So first of all, the conditions are complete whiteout. We've only got visibility of 500 feet. So even though everything's within a couple of miles, we're basically completely blind and completely reliant on our systems. So our first mission is to get from where we are here to Sanaki and do a landing on the runway, coming down the proper runway course. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is use our ADF, our automatic direction finding, to get to, into, if you like, the glide slope, the approach to the runway. So the runway, the approach on 09 is something like that. So we've got to navigate our way onto that line there. We're going to use ADF. Now ADF uses a series of NDB beacons, non-directional beacons. Um, if I were to go and have a look at an example of one on the map, I can see one there. Uh, most of them are not shown on the map, only uh, sporadic ones are shown on the map. This one here, and you can, you can see it has two bits of information. One, a frequency in the kilohertz range, and two, a code name. So this is 525 kilohertz, and delta alpha is a code name. And these beacons basically transmit radio signals in all directions, and coded on that radio signal is information, as we're going to go and see. And that allows us to home in to that beacon. Um, we don't have any distance information, we can't tell how close we are to the beacon, but we can tell the azimuth of that beacon from us, so we can navigate to that beacon, okay? Uh, now we're not interested in that beacon, we are interested in one that is on this uh, approach here, and it just so happens there are some that are on the approach, so I'm going to click on this airport here, we're in the F10 menu to get here, press F10, uh, sorry, the F10 map. Uh, we're getting the information here, we've got runways 2709, we're interested in runway 09. Uh, we've got all kinds of information. What we're interested in here is the NDBs. We have an inner NDB and an outer NDB. Both of those NDBs will be on the approach line as we spoke. You've got an inner and outer, and now I don't know the distances of those um, beacons from the threshold of the runway here, but usually I've always said the inner is about a mile from the threshold and the outer is about two miles. That may vary for different airfields, but that's what I've been going by. So what we can say is that this outer NDB is going to be stationed on this approach about two miles out, somewhere about there. So I'm going to put a point down there. We're going to try and navigate ourselves to about there with our, um, with our ADF. Uh, then once we're there, we're going to switch to ILS. ILS is a system that allows us to approach, uh, to navigate onto the course approach of the runway, including height and azimuth information, and guide us down to a landing on the runway. Um, mainly useful for, uh, for planes, but it can be useful for helicopters as well. Um, so basically, there is an ILS station here on the runway, and it's sending out a beam, if you like, a beam of radiation, and we have to find that beam, track that beam, and it will basically give us indications to steer us onto that beam all the way down. Um, as we said before and here is the information again on the airport it's on 09 it's a uh, frequency of 108.90 so we're going to use that to land on the runway then once we've landed on the runway an emergency, emergency call comes out from our friends down here they are a bunch of M1A2 Abrams tanks they are transmitting on an FM band of FM 40 megahertz um, it, to do that, you have to do that in the mission editor. You basically go set them to uh, set a frequency in the FM band, and then you assign um, a transmit message, and you can assign a dot wave file for them to transmit. And what we can do is we can receive that in our VHF FM radio, and use that also as guidance to guide ourselves to them. That's the third part of the mission. So we're going to show all three. Um, navigation methods off. Hope that makes sense. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is get the outer NDB. It is 335 kilohertz and uh, code name Bravo India, which will become uh, relevant shortly. Okay, right. So let's go, go down to our ADF system here. The first thing we want to do is to turn it from off to ADF here. So we're going to hover over this button here. And I'm going to press right mouse button, and you can hear that we're getting static, which means that the system is on and working, which is good. Secondly, uh, we're going to turn the gain up to maximum, because what we're going to be doing is listening to signals shortly. So I'm going to hover over the gain here and use the mouse uh, scroll wheel to scroll gain to maximum, as loud as we possibly can. Um, next, we're going to tune in. 
so um, we know that our frequency is 335 kilohertz uh, we've got uh, we've got band uh, frequency bands here 190 to 400 400 to 850 850 to 1750 so you can see we can change between them like this with the uh, right and left mouse button we're in the 190 to 400 and next we're going to tune so we're going to hover above the tune button here and use our scroll wheel on the mouse to scroll to 335 so this may take a little while And you'll notice occasionally when we get to certain frequencies, you can see our signal strength indicator, which is here, goes all the way up to the right here. That means we're picking up an NDB station or an NDB beacon. So let's keep going until we get to 335. So that could be 335 there. Now, what we're going to do is listen to the information that's coded on the radio signal, and that is Morse code. You'll hear the beeps, okay? Uh, so first of all, we want to find out what our uh, required um, Morse code is. And what we do is we go onto Google or whatever your preferred search engine is. You type in Morse code converter. You'll type in then the code for our outer beacon, which was Bravo India. The Morse code for Bravo India, B then I, is dash dot 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 dot. So let's listen. Definitely not what we said, but let's listen again and try it. It will be repeated every five to ten seconds. Dot dash dot. It's dot dash dot was the first letter, and that was wrong, because we want dash dot dot dot. So let's keep trying. And this is how we confirm that we've got the right station, because it's quite hard to tune in using this little meter here to the right frequency. So let's carry on and try and find one that's more likely to be 335. So we're going to try that one here. So remember, we're looking for dash dot 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 there we go dash dot 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 we are on 335 uh, bravo india which is our beacon so now we've got to get the information fed to us so we've got our radio compass line here uh, it's this arrow here you can see it's moving about slightly that is telling us basically the direction to the beacon it's saying that it's just right of north basically so what we're going to do is we're going to take off we're going to follow that um, radio compass line uh, until we get to the beacon so off we go now as you know I'm not the best Huey flyer so let's just do the best we can uh, this can be a little bit finicky uh, the, the, the line likes to swirl about a bit and um, be a little bit awkward so you just need to give it time especially when you do a bank corner let's sell it again so what I'm trying to do is get it to the 12 o'clock position and that means we're heading towards it so just It's pretty happy. About there. So we know that we're heading towards the beacon now. Now you remember, we've got no range information here. Um, so the only time we know our distance to the beacon is when we're on top of it. And we know that because all of a sudden that needle is going to twiddle around. If you imagine we're over the top of it, or if we go slightly over and beyond it, that needle will suddenly move around. That's the best we've got to know when we're on that beacon. Other than that, we have no idea. We just have to um, uh, uh, keep heading there, basically. So it's slipped right ever slightly. Let's head right a little. Okay, we've got the needle back in the 12 o'clock position. Getting a little bit high for my liking. We're going to lose joy of the ground soon. Right, what we should do is start slowing down a bit now because I don't want to overshoot it too much. So we'll try and get about 40 knots. We whoops, messed that up. And the needle has now gone mental. You see it's turned right round. That means we are on top of the NDB. So I'm going to do a quick right, swing it back in. Next thing I'm going to do, I could do this in the air, but I'm probably not good enough. So I'm just going to land and then we'll look at setting up the ILS. Okay, I made a bit of a meal of that landing, but we got down. Um, just put it down there. Okay, so we're not bang on that NDB, but we're pretty close. 
Um, the next thing we want to do is set up our ILS system uh, to take us into the approach course onto the runway. So first of all, let's turn our ADF off, uh, which is there. It served as well until now, so that's our ADF off. Now we're going to look at the ILS. So first of all, we're going to turn the ILS on. We're going to hover over there and right mouse button, put it on. I know you can't see that behind that knob, but just trust me, that's on now. Uh, we're going to set the frequency, and I've forgotten what the frequency... Oh, no, I remember it was 108.90. I'm going to hover over here, use right mouse button, uh, sorry, sorry, scroll wheel to scroll to 8, 108, and this one to scroll to 90. And you hear we're getting Morse code again. So we picked up that signal, that ILS signal, okay? Now that's going to be translated into this system here. Um, but essentially, it's going to give us two needles. In fact, before we do that, we need to set a course. Uh, let me jump back into the map. Wow, look at that. So literally, we landed literally uh, maybe 50 feet away from that beacon. So that shows how accurate it can be. Uh, right, so uh, now we know this is runway 09, but that's not the actual course of the runway. The course of the runway will be sli ever so slightly different. So what I'm going to do is just measure that. It may tell me it's somewhere, but I'm just going to measure it for ease. So you see I'm measuring there, and if you look at the top of the screen, it's 094 degrees. Back in the cockpit, we can set that course now. So we're going to hover over this button here, and sc mouse scroll wheel. 09... Four degrees, there we go. Right, next we're going to take off and we're going to use these two lines here. So this one here is called the localizer line. This one essentially gives us azimuth information. It's going to, so if it's to the right of us, like it is at the moment, we need to essentially chase it right. If it's to the left of us, we need to chase it left. And the idea, the name of the game is to keep it as central as possible all the time. That will keep us on the glide slope, on the approach uh, course, all, all the way down until essentially the runway okay and similar to that we have the glide slope line here it's not working at the moment the glide slope line because we're too far below the glide slope when we get further up and we intercept the glide slope it will become useful and it's very similar if it's above us up here it means we essentially need to head up to uh, to get to the glide slope which is a three degree descent glide slope and if it's below us it's signaling that we're too high we're above the glide slope so this is going to be very awkward because we're in a helicopter and i'm not a very good helicopter pilot but we're going to do the absolute best we can so, uh, oh, uh, here is uh, a useful switch. Here it is our uh, um, it is our reception sensitivity. So we're going to switch that to high. I haven't actually seen it make any difference, but I've just always been told to switch that to high. Okay, right, we're going to head off. We're going to be keeping our eye on this. And second eye on this, just to make sure we're not doing anything really silly. We know that we want to head to the east, roughly. Uh, so, up we go. So we're currently west, so we're obviously in the wrong direction. So let's turn around east. Okay, and now we're east, we can start, whoops, we can start using our localizer, our ILS localizer and glide slope. So the localizer says that we want to go right. You can see it's right of us at the moment. So that's fine, we're going to head right. And it's telling us to do that. It's not just going to give us the heading for the runway. It's going to put us on the correct course, which is just as important as the heading. Because it's pointless getting to the runway, just flying to the runway. You need to fly to the runway on the correct course to actually land on the runway. Otherwise, you'll come in at a right angle or something like that. So you can see it's moving to the centre now, which means we're on the right track. And this is quite difficult because I've got absolutely no idea where this runway is, obviously. And I don't want to go too high because I don't want to lose joy of the earth. So you can see we're, we, the localizer is pretty happy. I've almost got it centred now. The glide slope is above us, so I want to head up ever so slightly to meet the glide slope now. But I don't want to go too high because we're in treacherous uh, conditions here. Right, I've slipped left of the glide of the localizer, so I want to head right to meet that localizer again. I think I've been turning left by accident. Right, so let's head a bit further right here. Okay, we're heading back onto the localizer now. Still not on the glide slope, but that's okay. That's not as important for now as we're on a helicopter. Right, we've now slipped right of the um, localizer, so we're going to start heading left and try and start to neutralize it out now. And that got that localizer bang in the middle. We're slipping 
right again, so let's chase it right. Okay, we're quite far right. Got it back. Try and keep it in the centre. I'm way too low, that was a bit silly of me. Uh, that is a signal just saying that we're getting close to the station. The glide slope's now coming down to meet us. We're bang on the localizer now. And we've slipped off to the right again. Let's head back to the left. Way too low. Pretty bad flying going on here. Okay. Localizer line slipped to the right, so let's head back again. To the right, try and pick that up again. It's coming central now. I'm swooping left and right in a bit because this I'm, I'm not very good at controlling a helicopter. I've got the localizer bang on the money now, so I'm going to try and hold that. Hopefully we should be seeing this runway at some point. Now, you'll notice I've been hugging the earth all the time. That's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to uh, basically head upwards, essentially, to meet that glide slope line, but I just haven't got the skill to do that at the moment. I'm just going to worry about my azimuth. Slipped off uh, left. Oh, look at that. Bang on the runway. What are the chances, eh? So, uh, we're going to put her down now. This is always my most dangerous bit. Oh. Okay. Hey, not bad. So, let's talk about that. Um, so, you could see what I was doing with the localizer. When it shift left, I chased it left. When it shift right, I chased it right. You're supposed to be a lot smoother than that. You're supposed to keep it in the middle all the time. But I don't, I don't really get to fly this, so excuses, excuses. This is our glide slope line. I should have been keeping that in the center all the time. So, I should have been up much higher. I find that very hard to do in a helicopter, and I struggled. And so, I just went on the deck all the way. I mean, the height does it's not that important in a helicopter, as it is much more important in, air, in an airplane, obviously. But generally, even with a helicopter, you should be following that glide slope. So you, I should have really headed up until I met that line and kept that line level. And so what I wanted to see was those two lines, the localizer and the glide slope, in a perfect cross. That's going to take some practice to do that, but you can see how to do that. Right, now the third part of our tutorial is that we want to use our... VHF in FM band to go and find these tanks down here. Uh, so we know they're broadcasting on 40 FM, so let's go and patch into that. So, first of all, make sure our ADF is off, and it is. Next, make sure this ILS is off, and it is. Next, let's uh, turn to this here. So, let's try and pick up the frequency first of all. So, you hover above these frequency lines that says 30.00. So, we're going to change this one with the right mouse click. And you can hear that you're picking up a splatting sound. That splatting sound is a dot wave file that I imported uh, and told those tanks to uh, transmit on a loop on 40.00. This we can live in CARR, the volume we can turn down if we like because we don't want to listen to that too loud. Just enough so that we can hear we're picking it up. We've got off, transmit, receive, retransmit or home here. And what we want to do is go to home. And that is going to use our, uh, is, uh, our ILS instrument again that we use here. But the needles are telling us different information this time. Now, this needle here, I don't know the name of it, but I'm going to call it the azimuth needle is telling us, I believe, where the, f um, where the transmission is coming from in relation to our heading or our aircraft. So it's coming from the right at the moment, basically. So what I want to do is I want to take off and turn right until this needle here gets into the middle here and then, like the localizer from before, I want to follow it on that. As far as I know, I do not get any range information, just azimuth. This line here, I don't know what this line is. If anyone knows what that is, then let me know, please. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't do anything. Um, so let's uh, get started, shall we? So we've got our uh, FM set, we've got our uh, VHF set. Let's head off. Now this line can be extremely finicky. Um, so it's going to take a while to get this line on the right heading. So stand by as I try and do that. So it wants us to the left. Now it's happy. 
And what's this to the left? And I don't want to go too high. Because I'm going to get really bad vertigo if I lose the sight of the ground. Now it's bang on. We've got it pretty well. We're doing it. Every time that helicopter slips, although you can't see it, I'm putting rudder inputs in and I slip the aircraft and it'll upset that signal line. Um, that's just how it is at the moment. Now we want to go right. Hold. Now I want to hold that needle right in the centre now. So keep your eye out for some Abrams tanks. They're going to be a mile, a couple of miles away, so it may take a little while to get there. And we've slipped. We've slipped. We've got to go right now. Quite substantially by the looks of it. And back on the line. Now we're back on the line. Pretty happy with the speed. And ever so slightly right. Keep that needle in the middle. Needle slip left. Left we go. Needle's in the middle. Needle slip right. Let's turn right. Needle's in the middle. We've got the needle in the middle. Needle's turning right. Central. Right, come on tanks, where are you? Don't do this to me. I'm going to fly low because it's the only chance I've got of spotting the tanks. Needle's turning us left slightly. Left we go. Needle's turning us right. And like magic, there they are. It works. <laughs> That's my first time. Happy with that. So, that shows you how you can use a VHF in an FM band to guide yourself to these tanks. Um, at some point, I'll show you using the mission editor how to set them up. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty cool. Let me try and get this landing just to finish off the tutorial in style. Super lasers. That's that. So, that showed ADF automatic direction finding to get to a beacon. It showed ILS to get on the approach and glide slope of a runway and VHF in the FM band to pick up any uh, signal that's being sent out from friendly troops, a downed aircraft, whatever, you know. Hope that helps. I'll see you later.